This is the second video in the React video series and in this video we are going to talk about JSX. JSX is a JavaScript extension for describing HTML XML expressions. JSX enables us to write parts of React code with a very simple syntax. In React, we have the notion of a React element that describes an HTML element. To create a React element without JSX, we have to invoke a react.createElement call and pass the description of the HTML elements as parameters. Note that this makes for really terse syntax. Instead, with JSX, we can write the same code as if we were writing HTML. Note that JSX is syntactic sugar. It's just providing a new way of writing code that provides for the same functionality. So the code on the right hand side looks simpler but the functionality of this is the same as the code on the left hand side. JSX is an extension of JavaScript and not part of the core specification. So browsers or JavaScript engines are not expected to understand or implement JSX. Hence, if we send JSX code directly to the browser, it will raise an error. So before we send our JSX code to the browser, we need to transpile it which brings Babel into the picture. Note that we had used Babel preset react in the last video. So Babel preset react will convert JSX style code in the left hand side to ES5 code as written on the right hand side. Now let's go back to the code from the first video. Here we have app.jsx and we are using JSX at two places. One is within the render method where we have div hello world div and the second instance is at line 15 where we are instantiating a react element using the hello world component. Both of these would be transpiled into react element calls when we run this code via Babel. Some more things about JSX. It's always a good idea to wrap JSX in brackets. This is to prevent something that's called automatic semicolon insertion. You can read about automatic semicolon insertion in the link given in the description below. If it's a single line comment, you can just trace the brackets in the same line. If it's a multi-line com if it's a multi-line JSX statement, you can put the bracket first, then write your JSX in the lines below, and then finally end with a closing bracket. You can also make J JSX dynamic by embedding JavaScript expressions within JSX. So uh, to add JS expressions within JSX, you have to use curly braces. So for example, uh, see the expression in the third line, you have a JSX expression and this is in brackets. Then within that you have a div opening tag and a closing tag. And within that you wanted to embed JavaScript or the JavaScript expression. So we are doing it by curly braces and title is a JavaScript variable, which translates to hello world. So this JSX expression will translate to div hello world div. Similarly, on the next, on the next line, you have JSX expression two, and here also you are putting a mathematical expression, but this is a JavaScript expression. So again, you you can have it in curly braces. You can also embed function calls within JSX, and we have a function here called hw function, which returns hello function world, and we are calling it within JSX. So this is this entire line is JavaScript. Within that you have JSX in brackets, and within that you have JavaScript in curly braces. So this way we can make our JSX expressions dynamic. You can also specify HTML style attributes on JSX. So for example, if you wanted to define a React element, create a React element from a div tag, you could also Add an attribute called tab index and so you can either add attributes as string literals in that case use double quotes or you can use JavaScript expressions so in this line so I have an Im I image tag and I want to use the SRC attribute the value of the SRC attribute will be derived from the value of this JavaScript variable user dot avatar URL just make sure that you don't use both curly braces and quotes simultaneously or you'll end up, end up in issues. Finally, JSX tags can also have children. 
So we are creating this element variable from the following JS code and it has a div tag and within the div tag it has two children h1 and h2. So we can define our JS6 code to have children and Babel will transpile this accordingly into React element calls. So this is it for JSX. We'll talk about React components and React elements in detail in the next video.